I'm a surgical oncologist at Sefi Hospital. I run a small LLP called Oncology Logistics and a foundation which helps cancer patients. Now, am I a minimally invasive surgeon? Well, I like to think of myself as a reasonably good, good open surgeon who is struggling with minimally invasive. Why do you say struggling? Because if you understand the tumor biology and you understand the behavior of GI cancers, then it's not so easy to just jump into minimally invasive surgery. So in my journey of minimally invasive surgery since 2015, I today offer laparoscopy to almost all my colorectal patients who don't have a locally advanced disease. Uh, esophagectomy, I will do the thorax part definitely min minimally invasive, laparoscopic. But for gastric cancer, for some reason, I have not been able to make the move into minimally invasive surgery very much. The reason is what the previous speakers have covered. We often find that nutritionally Indians are not uh, at the best. So you have patients coming with an advanced disease. Uh, on my diagnostic laparoscopy, very often I find that there is peritoneal disease. Uh, the, the, the patient may not be affording minimally invasive. And I don't think that I'm still very confident of doing a radical D2 resection laparoscopically at least. But yes, we must think in terms of minimally invasive because that's the future. Technology is going to take us over there. And responsible oncologists who are good open surgeons must make a graceful transition to minimally invasive, but carefully. What are the logistics of cancer treatment? If you saw my one of my previous slides said I'm a socialist and oncologist. Being senior so many years, I think we become more philosophical. So what's the ideal situation when you are treating a particular cancer? You want to diagnose with minimum investigations. You want to get to the right stage of the cancer radiologically, pathologically, and after a good surgical excision, you want to offer the optimum protocol of treatment. See how confusing we found what uh, Nilesh was saying with all his chemotherapy drugs. You know, uh, so you have to have an optimum protocol. You can't just rush in with any kind of surgery or chemotherapy. There must be minimum morbidity. In our kind of health setup, morbidity costs a lot minimum social stress on the patient and a cost benefit to whatever they are doing. If you're able to achieve all this laparoscopically or minimally, minimally invasively, go ahead and do it. But actually what happens in our kind of healthcare system is that our investigations are often done before the patient comes to us. They are substandard. There is substandard staging. Radiologically, we may not always get the uh, optimal protocol. If there is morbidity, we have to pay a lot. There's increased social stress. And sometimes we are not able to give the cost benefit, which we look at. With 70% of Indians paying for healthcare out of their pocket, we have to rethink all these things. Uh, and how are we going to offer cancer treatment? The first chance is the best chance. We cannot offer a suboptimal, minimally invasive surgery to a patient. Uh, just because we are excited about doing minimally invasive work. So what's the ideal situation? I think Sridhar also from Tata said that there must be a science-centric MDT. How many of our patients or our hospitals uh, outside of Tata Memorial have a science-centric MDT or they have a disease management group? We must have self-evaluated evidence. It's very good looking at all these guidelines and this evidence which we keep throwing at each other in the conferences. But where do I stand? Can I deliver the same results? Do I have the same technology? Do I have the same support in my institute? And uh, am I, am I uh, reasonably trained to do that? So look at evidence, but don't become slave to evidence. We shouldn't be people who are rushing to look at the guidelines for every decision which needs to be taken. Be aware of the guidelines, but understand and evaluate where you stand in relation to the guidelines. There must be a reasonable volume of that particular surgery which you are doing if you want to make the transition to minimally invasive. The economics must be right. Technology costs, but our job is to give a benefit of that technology to the patient. You must have infrastructure. We lost a decade trying to do complex cancer surgery in nursing homes with suboptimal infrastructure. You must have good technology. So everything must be related to advanced laparoscopic 
high definition screens, good instrumentation, a good team, and uh, all the paraphernalia, the energy uh, equipment which you need. And in actuality, where, where do we stand? In many of our institutes, it's not science-centric, it's person-centric. So we don't really have MDTs which function with that efficiency which we should be having. We look at first world evidence like gospel truth. And, uh, and we are not ready to question that evidence. Remember that a lot of these surgeries are done in those uh, South Asian countries where they have screening protocols. So they detect early disease. The state pays for the centers of excellence which are being run and they are uh, uh, disease management groups. So we can't just produce it over here. We have inadequate volume. If I'm doing less than uh, maybe five or six gastrectomies or 10 gastrectomies in a year, perhaps I'm not suited for uh, the, the uh, making the shift to minimally invasive. Inadequate infrastructure and technology, that also happens in our excitement to get into minimally invasive. Sorry, I'm spoiling all the fun about minimally invasive, but these are the things which need to be understood. These are the ground realities which we need to understand. So let's look at the principles of gastric cancer. A good preoperative CT scan. If you want PET scan today, no patient comes without a PET scan. The moment they have even the slightest doubt of uh, malignancy before a biopsy, a PET scan is done. But I'm quite happy with the CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis, provided it is done by a good radiologist. Or the other option is a PET scan. I am I believe in neoadjuvant therapy, which should be given because nutritionally, most of our patients cannot tolerate adjuvant therapy after surgery because they lose weight and their nutrition goes down. Indians are not as well nourished as the, as the Westerners who uh, undergo adjuvant therapy. So I'm rather very fond of new adjuvant therapy. Chemo radiation, yes, especially for gastric gastroesophageal junctional tumors and antral tumors because these modalities, the radiation actually treats the retroperitoneal tumor bed and sterilizes whatever residual cancer could recur over there and chemotherapy shrinks. I was very skeptical about preoperative uh, chemo radiation, but I actually found that it is easier to operate once it is given about six weeks after surgery. We must look at the clinical trials which are being conducted in India and especially the data which is coming from Tata Memorial Hospital and the indigenous uh, data which is coming. But at the same time, if you don't have a clinical trial, do not let that discourage you from doing your gastric cancer surgeries in whichever institute you are, but be aware of what's happening. Treatment decision must have a multidisciplinary tree. We cannot have a system where an endoscopist detects a gastric cancer and then calls his favorite surgeon and says, okay, I've got a gastric cancer, let's go ahead with surgery. No, you must involve a reasonably good MDT and that includes a nutritionist, a chest physician, and so on, many of these patients are have uh, even COPD and poor nutrition. Uh, obviously, they should be done in hospitals with a reasonably good supportive system in place. 16 or more lymph nodes to be removed. I think we all understand that a D2 gastric resection is the standard of surgery. And as I will again say that in all solid tumors, surgery is the best modality of the treatment in a country like India, and we know that all our long-term survivors are invariably those who have undergone surgery. Surgery should only be performed to palliate major systems in the setting of metastatic cancer. Surgeons' experience in the treatment of gastric cancer should be of performing the operation. You should have some kind of training in the treatment of, uh, in the surgery for gastric cancers. And if you are want to do laparoscopy or shift uh, onto laparoscopic surgery, then experience for advanced laparoscopic surgery and gastric resection. Now, if you see there are eight trials, I will not go into the details. What do all of them say? That laparoscopy is non-inferior to open. Now, look at this terminology. It doesn't say it's better. It says it's non-inferior. Why should I want to turn change over to something which is non-inferior? I'm already doing something which is equally good. So if you're doing good open surgery to a nice big incision and doing a good D2 resection, don't be, uh, don't, don't, don't feel embarrassed about it. And uh, well, as and well, you're comfortable, you can think of taking a shift to minimally invasive surgery. So I would say for our country, a good open surgery is the gold standard. But yes, minimally invasive, I, 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 I have progressively been increasing. I'm a general oncologist. 
So I do gynec oncology, I do GI, I do breast, I do head neck. And uh, oh, uh, since uh, I think the last uh, seven years, I have been increasing my work in minimally invasive, fortunately, because I had a good equipment, good, good team, and I, I, I like the results I see with minimally invasive. That's my own personal journey. Uh, I have made my mistakes. I won't say that minimally invasive is better, but as I said, that's the technology. If you want to make the shift, you can think about it. Less pain, less morbidity, less ICU stay, hospital stay offsets the longer operative time. Initially, it takes more operative time down the line. Uh, possibly you can do it in the same time as open surgery. Very early feeds, we keep tubes for all our patients, nasal tubes and start entering uh, enteral feeds with ERAS protocol. Definitely less blood loss. And one advantage is there, they're able to start adjuvant therapy uh, early and the nutritional imbalance uh, in the patient is less. So we must think of how we can make a graceful transmission to minimally invasive surgery. I, as I said, I'm still struggling to make that transition in gastric cancer because many of, many of the patients which come to me have metastatic disease in the peritoneum and they cannot afford. I am just not very happy with, uh, with laparoscopy. I'm more comfortable in robot, robotic for these patients, but obviously robotics is more expensive. So it's not something which uh, we are able to offer every patient. What are the pitfalls? Be wary of suboptimal skills and technology. Suboptimal skills doesn't mean that you uh, don't do it, but then involve people, let there be a team of people who are good laparoscopic surgeons. So if I'm doing a laparoscopic surgery, which uh, I have at least other two well-trained laparoscopic surgeons with me, and we do it together, a lot of thought is given to the procedure, plan in advance and do it as a team. No compromise on technology. Doesn't matter you earn less, but see that you use the best instrumentation. Good case selection. Ideally, an early gastric cancer, where even a D1 resection, uh, D1 nodal dissection will do, and then you move on to doing more complex uh, T2 tumors with node positive, and obviously with post neurogenes. Now, one of the issues which may come is that uh, retroduminal nodes may be a little difficult to clear, but it's possible to do that with some practice, as we see that, you know, minimally invasive is, people are becoming more and more skillful at the bit time. With uh, antral tumors, splenic hilar nodes may be a problem, peripancreatic nodes may be a problem. So don't keep a very high threshold for conversion. If you feel that you're not progressing and you're stuck somewhere, go ahead and convert in your first few cases. So in summation, Minimally invasive, not just about organ retrieval, but about the correct logistics and the treatment of the cancer, as I showed in my first slide. We must define a common goal in the healthcare industry. And on this, the doctors, the MDT, all specialists, specialists, especially the endoscopist, the surgical oncologist, the medical oncologist, the radiation therapist, the government of India, the hospital managements have to have a common goal in furthering and developing uh, better treatment in GI cancers. Uh, we need to develop that goal. And unless we do that, I don't think that we are going to be able to reproduce what we see in the videos from the Koreans or from the, uh, from the this thing, perhaps in some institutes like Tata Memorial, but they are also loaded by, uh, by the, just by the sheer volume of work, work. So until then, reassess our protocols, keep training, Keep nurturing the juniors. And I hope that one of you picks up the baton uh, when I uh, stop my struggle with minimally invasive surgery and take it further. Thank you. Mm -hmm.